Good morning, Oklahoma. Welcome to Cow-Calf Corner. This week's topic is more for purebred seed stock cow-calf operations, and we talk about a technology we can use to try to improve our accuracy of selection, specifically DNA typing. Now, it's important as we talk about DNA typing and the information we can gain from it that we realize it's still critical to collect phenotypic data. Birth weights, weaning weights, yearling weights, the whole litany of performance measures that we have historically collected is important to continue to collect because as we think about the technology of DNA typing, over time, it is that phenotypic data that permits us to train the markers, so to speak, and identify the alleles and learn more about their additive genetic effect on quantitative traits. So, this isn't something that replaces collection of data, it's still important, but at a time when input costs are so high, we are possibly looking at having to early wean, maybe making some selection decisions at weaning, as opposed to keeping those animals around longer and investing more in that input. So what information can we get from DNA typing? Basically about three things. Uh, first, we can identify parentage. And that's a pretty simple concept, but where pedigrees are very critical long-term to accurate genetic prediction, sometimes mistakes get made, the neighbor's bull jumps the fence, we pull the wrong straw of semen out whenever we were AI breeding a cow. So it's always reassuring to be able to verify parentage on those animals. Second thing that we can get is when we think about simply inherited qualitative traits, something like horn pole status, maybe color genes in different breeds of cattle. We can learn if we have got heterozygous carriers that may still be polled, where we're dealing with a polled allele being dominant, but we may have a polled animal standing here. It's still helpful to know if that animal potentially is homozygous polled or heterozygous polled. And in some other cases, just knowing what kind of coat color inheritance we're gonna deal with. The big thing we get from DNA typing, or genomically enhanced EPDs, if we want to think about them that way, is on our quantitative traits. These are traits that are impacted by thousands, if not tens of thousands, of different genes. And what we have learned in the 10 or 20 years we have been collecting data is there are certain alleles in the genome of beef cattle that we're starting to learn more about the additive impact that they have on these quantitative traits like weaning, yearling, birth weight, milk, marbling, everything that follows under that umbrella of quantitative traits. If we'll submit DNA, we actually get back updated EPDs, taking into account what genes we have identified. They're higher accuracy EPDs. We get a bump that is about the equivalent of a bull siring his first calf crop and getting that data turned in. So. If we're in situations where making early selection decisions are helpful, DNA typing is going to give us additional accuracy. It's going to update the EPDs on animals even before some of those records on animals early in life have been collected, like a weaning or yearling weight or some of that stuff that's going to occur later on. So in the end, it's a technology and a means to try to improve the accuracy of selection. I suggest you contact your breed registry for proper instructions on DNA typing. Every registry may do that a little bit different, but typically we submit DNA in the form of a blood sample, potentially on a DNA card or a tube, or potentially hair follicles that have been pulled from the tail switch of the animal. But more information on that would be available through your respective registry. Appreciate you joining us this week on Cow-Calf Corner. <laughs>